Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now, uh, for a little bit of sports, we're going to be talking to Wally Scott to understand if Gennard uh, Raw's job truly is on the line. Uh, there have been rumors. Of course, there was a you know, very, very strong uh, you know, uh, story that he had been sacked. But that, of course, uh, was dispelled a few days later, a few hours later. Uh, Wally Scott, good morning. Good morning. And uh, thanks for being on The Breakfast this morning. Let's get into it. Uh, is Gerard Raw's job safe or not? Well, I, I wouldn't be the one to say it's safe or not, but if you ask me, should it be safe? I don't think so. You know, um, he came into the coaching job for Super Eagles in 2016. Um, before then, um, he had um, antecedents of people like Stephen Keshi of Blessed Memories, who actually won the Nations Cup with the Super Eagles. And um, he came in, and I was one of the very few people who actually went against him and said, listen, Genoro will call a Nigerian player of Nigerian descent, whether he play in Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, and just come and play for Nigeria, you know. And he was able to go on the internet. I used to call him an internet coach. He was able to go on the internet and look for Nigerian players who are abroad, Alexi Wobi, um, different players. It brings them to the Super Eagles, and then what does he do with them? Yeah. And then, you know, General Raw reminds you of um, the average Manchester United coach, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who has so many stars, but he's not using them well. And, um, okay, here he is, 59 matches, 20-something wins. Mm -hmm. And when Keshi became the coach initially, he said, I want to build a Super Eagles where Nigerians don't ask who won. They ask how many goals were scored by Nigerian team. General Raw hasn't been able to do that. And you look at... The, the, the players he has in that squad. He's got Victor Osimek, Kelechi Inacho, Wilfred Ndidi. Fantastic players in their clubs abroad. And he brings them here, and all he tells them is, you guys go there and do well. He, does he have a game plan? So the question is, should Genot Raw go? Yes. When? We don't know. No, but let's, let's also look at the timing now, uh, with the fact that the final round of the World Cup qualifiers is coming in March. And then, of course, you're also looking at uh, January. Do you think it's rational at this point in time to relieve him of his job? If you're a football fan, just a regular football fan who bets, all these big guys who bet these days. If you're a regular football fan, you know what each of our players can do. Yeah. I think every Nigerian, Nigerian who actually follows football can coach the Super Eagles. We know what Victor Osime can do. We know what his speed is. For General Roth to come and say, okay, good, we, we, did, we drew against Kivert on Tuesday was because our defenders lacked pace. Our strikers lacked pace. Whose job is that to give them pace? Me? It's his job. And he didn't do it. Somebody else should do the job. I think um, the earlier we let General Roth go and get somebody else who can work on that team, the better. Now, will they come to Nigeria? Can we afford the Jose Mourinho's? Can we afford the Brendan Rodgers? Yes. Nigeria is that rich. Will they want to come under this system? We have, unfortunately, a president of the NFF, Amadou Penek, who doesn't listen, who is very arrogant, who thinks what he does is right, doesn't want anybody's opinion. Will anybody want to walk under a man like that? Only Genot Raw can. And I think the only reason why Genot Raw is still there is because he's been able to Take all of Amaju's whatever it brings. He has become a dustbin somewhere along the line. But I think the, the truth must be said, the Super Eagles are owned by the people, not by Amaju Penic. And we must talk. And we're talking now. Everybody, even John Fashanu, I had Sam Soje on my Plus Sports program yesterday. Sam Soje was a very popular yes, ex-international, if we Soje's if brother, and he Soje. said, yes, get on rush, should go. John Fashanu, I should have today on the show in a few minutes on Plus Sports, and he says Gennot Ross should go. These are former footballers who ply their trades abroad, who know what football should be, well, much more than but, I do. But, Wally well, Scott, you know, if, if Gennot Ross go, goes, you know, and we still don't fix the challenge of, um, like you've described, of Amadou Pinnick, um, because obviously, from what you've described, there is a problem, you know, in the Bigger whole problem. structure, there's a problem, you know, from the top to the bottom. bottom. Um, we have great players, but there's just something wrong with the management of Nigerian football um, and Nigerian sports generally. Um, so if we continue to sack coaches, you know, it doesn't solve the actual problem. What we are only going to do is bring in maybe a seemingly better coach tactically, but it hasn't solved the problem. I spoke a few minutes, a few seconds ago. I said, listen, Genot Rock going just might not be the total issue. Ama Jupinik has to go too. The management has to... Let me give you an example. Austin Eguavoin. We call him Cerezo. He's supposed to be the technical director of the NFF. 
he is supposed to vet the list of players, explain to we the journalists how we played, what went wrong technically. He has never, in over four years of his job, ever given a written speech or a verbal speech to tell us see what went wrong. Never. Everybody is, con is, is considering his job, his regular monthly salary. Nobody is thinking about the job, really. Let me give you an example. When Stephen Keshi, may so rest in peace, was the coach of the Super Eagles, we played the biggest and the best African team at that point in time, Cote d'Ivoire. They had everybody who mattered then. Didier Drogba, Kolo Toure, Yahya Toure, Didier Zokora. Everybody was there, and we beat them 2-1. In the semi-finals in the Nations Cup, basically, the coach of the Cote d'Ivoire team said, listen, I had a list of people who could give me problems in that team. I never thought a Stanley Uba, who scored the second goal in that match, would give me problems because he was home-based. Every other person in that team was foreign. And Stephen Keshi brought in a home-based player. He had trusted. Genoro has never used a home-based player, does had, does, has no trust in our home league in the last how many years since he became the coach. Yeah. Okay. This is a man who was brought in, and we have asked Amadji Pini this question. I have personally asked Amadji Pini, KFF president, in a public gathering. And I said, listen, what plans did you guys tell these guys to come and do with Nigerian League? And the guy was like, well, we never really discussed that. How can you bring a foreign coach to Nigeria and you never discuss him trying to improve on our Nigerian League? Yeah, but it's not necessarily the coaches. I, I, well, I personally would say it's not necessarily the coaches... Um, responsibility to improve on the Nigerian League. The Nigerian League itself, the management of Nigerian Football Federation, should do what it can to improve on the Nigerian League. My yes, point. you would say. Okay, my point. My point. Yes, wait, wait, I on. agree with you. Scott. Yes, you would say that um, Ghana Raw should pick talent, should you know seek talent from the yes. Nigerian League, and I agree with that absolutely. But if the league is not developed, it's uh, you know um, by itself. If it is not churning out the very best. Um, quality players. He cannot, you know, out of patriotism, continue to pick from a league I don't that think the NFF is not managing. I don't think patriotism is the word. I think that um, if the structure, the NFF structure itself, is not working for it for itself, Genoro being a coach who should be able to identify raw talents can go to Ogba, Iano Paja, Ikeja, Leki, Osapa, London. Go to the field there and look at boys play and actually identify a player there who can make things happen. That's his job as a coach. We have asked many questions, really. A coach, Alex Ferguson in Manchester United, was able to re-identify the word coaching. Alex Ferguson said, listen, I am not a coach. I have gone beyond that. I go to my players' houses on their birthdays. I go to their wife's birthdays. I have become a manager. And Alex Ferguson was able to change the word from coach to manager. They now manage teams. Geno Raw cannot just sit back and relax in France or wherever he is, or Germany, and then come back to Nigeria two weeks to a tournament, and then he's watching our boys on TV. He doesn't go to, he doesn't have any raw talents he wants to bring into it. Yes, the structure is bad. What has the coach done extra? Listen, Osaroge, I do not think Plus TV Africa has sent you on a course in the last three years. However, I want to believe that you go on the internet and do courses for yourself, by yourself, for Saroge. Because the structure is bad, doesn't mean General Rock can't go out of his way and look for time. If he loves his job, he has a passion for it, he doesn't spend half the time abroad. Well, the point, the point, the point no, so, is... Okay. Oh, please go ahead, Mr. Okay. So I was going to ask, um, if you look at the performance of these players over time, you find out that these guys play in you know, different clubs and then they come to Nigeria, they seem to be doing differently. So um, don't you think that they have some loyalty to these clubs because of the motivation and the way they're being treated? I think the, the question is, what is the, can we speak for the technical ability of the coach that we have right now. I can't speak for him. No, so because it, it, like, it brings us to the case of, I remember, you know, sometime in Nigeria where we talked about changing, changing the service chiefs and that would, you know, solve the security problem. Uh, right now, from what you're saying, it feels like General Roy is a problem. If we take him out, everything is going to, you know, be over. All I did not say that. Okay. I asked Sam Soji yesterday, I said, listen, if you are going to bring in a coach and take out General Roy, I don't want names. What kind of coach do you think we should have? And Sam Soji said, Let's look for a coach who knows how to use the different players in their abilities. Manchester United have a player called Paul Pogba. He plays in the midfield for Manchester United. But he doesn't have a free role. He has a role he has to do. And he's not doing very well 
in Manchester United. But when he goes to the French national team, he's gotten a free role, he can run, and he's got a fantastic player in Ngolo Kante behind him. What I'm saying is, how best can you use Victor Osime? How does he play in his club, Napoli, and he's scoring so well? How best can you use Kelechi Nacho? Just, just get a raw, actually think about that. Now, we have the technical director who should advise him on how best to use the players, Osne Guavoin, who has not been in any of our matches in the last three years. How do we work around it? We can't continually blame the players because they play different roles in their clubs and they come to the Nigerian Super Eagles and they play different roles. Let's assume they are doing that. Is our coach technically stable? Why should say, good, this is the role you are going to play. If you guys don't do well, I have a plan B. When, our coach doesn't have a plan A. <clears throat> when is the last time we had a coach that we saw, um, understood what needed to be done, and on and you know was also um, you know tactically you know brilliant let's get something clear we have never had a coach that is technically and tactically good in the last 40 years that's the truth I mean, the biggest coach there, that we, there has to be a time the, the biggest coach that we had at a point and it was the biggest scammer that i know was clemens vesterhoff clemens vesterhoff had contacts in many places so he was able to take Okocha to Eintracht Frankfurt. He was able to take Kano Wako and Fnidi George to Ajax. He got them into fantastic structures, good environments, and then he brought them all back. And, they did, and that's, that has been our best Super Eagles so far. Yeah, so what was, different, what was different in that time? Was the NFF better managed in that time? Were the challenges that the NFF, you know, and the structure and its management, um, weren't they present in that there time? There has never been a point that the NFF or NFA has been managed well. No. Vesta office was just able to put his foot down and say, this is what I want. I mean, and, so, and they gave him what he wanted. Well, now, when Gennot Raw came in, Gennot Raw has played puppets to everybody. Our very own yeah, Sunday, but, so, our very own what, Sunday what is said, this is my resigned and ran away from the job because he felt like these guys are not going to change. They won't do what I want. See so, so, you so can that's imagine. Why, that's why I don't, I don't want us to keep blaming Gennot Raw because whoever it is that you bring, I mean, from what you've said, the only antidote or the only answer to fixing Nigerian football is bringing a, a coach that has superhuman strength and, no. and works, for, works for the X-Men. Because he's the only one that will be able to put his foot down. Like you've described, Clement Vesterhoff. We um, know for one that the ministers, said, the, the, ministers that the Honorables House of Assembly, send names to the coaches and say, use my boy. We know that. But you see, there will be a little amount of technical capabilities that are raw will show that will say, good, yes, this guy, these guys have been forced on him, but I, he's doing... I, am. I, I would also accept, you know, that he's had a great team and he's not been able to use it. I, yes. I accept that. Okay, so can I just ship it, this in quickly, hoping that you can answer what options do you think the NFF will have if, um, you know, Gennett Roy is actually really... The good? NFF have enough money to bring the biggest coaches in the world. Any names? However... The structure itself, these guys cannot work under it. We know our own Sunday would say, who, are, who is doing very well in coaching? He is the highest ranked coach in Nigeria today. He has a grade B certificate in coaching. So he is good enough for the Super Eagles. However, he ran away when he came here. He said the guys would not change. They were not listening to him. They wanted things done their way. Things weren't done right and he walked away. That is one man I have too much respect for, Sunday would say. He has the ability to walk away and tell Nigerians, listen, these guys won't change. They are corrupt. They won't do things the right way, and I can't work like this. If by then Nigerians wanted to change, the structure was going to change. It would have changed during Sunday. Then they bring in again Raw, who will say yes, sir, at everything. Jump once, he jumps twice. Oh, he it doesn't work like yeah, that. Raw was really, I would just describe him as a victim of, you know, the same system that we're talking he about. He doesn't Sad, seem like a sadly, German to me. Sad, sadly, well, he's a victim of, you know, the Nigerian system. System, and, yes. And the challenges that, you know, we have here. But sadly, he's also not been able to prove himself um, a, a tactically brilliant coach, you know, a person who's able to use the brilliance that he has in his team. Because nine, there's no, I mean, I looked at the two teams, the Nigerian Cape Verde match. We had all the brilliance in that, in that, you know, in those eleven players, but we still couldn't, and we've still not been able to, in the last couple of years, been able to play any game that we we saw the Super Eagles play with the flair that they normally should play with. You know, Nigerian boys will say it's um, street parlance level. On the street level, they will tell you all Genoa does is he arranges the guys, puts them together, and in pidgin English, he tells them guys, "Na ke vedu we play today, na go play." 
As in, we, we don't see any game plan. We don't see anything in that team. It's like a case of you guys go and play and it's just individual brilliance. Victor yeah. Osime has been the miracle for our team. Individual brilliance. What has he been told to do on the field of play? What has he been told to do? We can't see any cut out. You can watch matches and say, okay, this guy told to run the flanks. This one has been told to stay in defense, don't go anywhere. In our Super Eagles, we don't see anything. Yeah, well, everybody runs forward, everybody runs backwards. and. Vic, um, Igalo is also coming back, I believe. Igalo is already back. He's back, all right. Well, Scott, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very and, much. Uh, sorry. Great thank analysis you, um, thank on you. sports this morning. That's where we wrap up the program. Remember, we're to catch up. If you missed out on any of our discussions this morning, it's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And I am Messi. Hope you have a great morning. I am Osao Gi Ogbala.